I like to share and, and I always want to share. And I just think not sharing is so hard to deal with. Oh. And I always bring up Remind the movie. Remind me never to tell you a secret. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I'm a sloth. A sloth. You know, you know what? Let's hear it, Frank. Let's get that out of the way before I continue on. I'm not a fan of sloths. I was trying to be a sloth, but I'm moving too fast. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of sloths. They're they're pretty cuddly in the in the stuffed animal world. They are, and not even now. You know what? I'm going to compare sloths with. Sloths with pizza. 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 <laughs> I'm going to compare a sloth with a pizza. Meaning it got trendy, but it's nothing to... Around the same time, and it's like... Not the same time. No, nah, you, you know, because pizza is like a new invention. Um, no, nah, you know, like, I, I don't know. It's like, I, I can imagine there was a time, I want to say the year is 2014, and you go into Forever 21 with your friends, and there's... That's right now, isn't it? What? Sloths are big right now. So is pizza. I mean, like, I'm saying, like, and pizza like, doesn't go out of style. It does. And it do has. you know pizza? Shoot, I just learned this. It has something to do with sign language. I think pizza has the most signs for it, meaning I think, like, there's a lot of pe- sign language. I think a lot of people make up their own sign for it. Okay. Um, yeah. And it's just like, I wouldn't be against sloths. I think I would care less about them, but it's like, oh. is it sloth or sloth? Uh, a sloth. Like cold slaw. Yeah, you gotta say it slowly too. Like slaw. <laughs> yeah, that's called something. Uh, when a word sounds like the sound it makes, like snap uh, or yeah. crash. Yeah, or sloth. Sloth. Um. Yeah. So it's like I, I don't know. It, why, like, people just like to hop on the bandwagon. Are you just against? Yeah, I'm a hater. Communal. I'm, I am. I am, appreciation. I'm, I'm by definition a hater. I believe is um. There is a word for that. You're a lover. As well. You're a, you're. A lover. I am. I am. I think I'm such a lover that it's like, I want all the animals to be loved. Like, why do we all? Why are we all loving the sloth? Have uh, they don't even. Have you ever, like all these people that love sloths? Have they ever seen a sloth? Yeah. Every, videos. Every person. Of, videos that, of sloths are very cute. They are cute, but so is like, I don't know, uh, billy goats. But everything has their time. Yeah. The pizza sort of goes across time, but like, don't you think that? Be, and and like because they can't there can't be like if you do go into forever, forever 21 or oh, yeah. anywhere five below you know it can't be like a walrus and a sloth and a tiger and a bat and a you know it, because then <laughs> you want to be part of the trend so it's like oh she has a cute sloth hat so i want a cute sloth hat you know yeah i guess i don't maybe i don't like because it never feels genuine to me i'm a very genuine guy Oh yeah, it's Absolutely. always just like it's mindless. I'm yeah. following. Yeah, and it's like, oh, I love like sloths. Do you? Pandas love were in... huge when in the '90s, yeah, right? Pandas were big. You know, UNICEF. I don't know about that. That's a serious panda. I meant the kind like everything was like cutesy, fun pandas. You yeah. Know? But you're against it. I <sighs> used to be until I realized that it's pointless to be against these things. Well, we're all in prison. Oh. <laughs> I wish we could like pan around the the uh, setting. Just oh my god! <laughs> and I like I have a jumpsuit on, you know. <laughs> uh, you know that is true. If you ever watched, um, you know these kind of that would be good. These mockument, not even they're not mockumentaries, but they're just like not, they're kind of not very serious documentaries where uh, someone's being interviewed. Like think of like um, the Tiger King. What, what was that? It wasn't called the Tiger King, was it? Yeah, it was. It was okay. You know. And he's being interviewed and he's like on a chair, like in a room. And it's yeah. like, he's in, he's in street clothes the whole time. Yeah. The end of the show. You know, that's the, and it's like, yeah. you know, <laughs> they're like, that would be good. Uh, a prison podcast. Oh yeah. Like they should just give like the best people in a prison, but like, they I, might. I, I want them both to have life sentences. Like I don't want to see you on the street in a year. No, no, no. Like I, I and like. Not saying that they deserve like I'm saying they already but have. But it's the, all it's it's they're, already going. It's already yeah. said and done, and it's like even on your good behavior, and it's like yeah, it's like the background is just fine, but it's like yeah. in reality. And also, I don't really like. I don't want it to be a prison podcast, like talking about prison. The uh, the hooch they just made, right? I, I want it to be just completely normal, right? And 
people will like in the comments ask that presence like glance over it it's like oh what's my favorite animal uh sloths actually <laughs> yeah um, so we're all in prison okay because i used to be like you once and I would say Christmas is on my nerves. Like it's it's too often. Not the birth of Jesus, but like buying the Christmas tree and everything like that. And then I realized we were all in prison and we we're all decorating our prison cells and we're all learning TikTok dances and we're all, you know, um, okay, this is what we're doing now. Like tacos are in. And it and it makes our prison sentence more bearable and fun. So in the big, big, big scheme of things, no, it's it's it, 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 all animals do deserve love and the sloth he may um be very smelly or something in real life that's true but it's just like a fun little um distraction i mean we had a distra distraction podcast i think in the early early 90s. early aughts <laughs> the early 90s um yeah okay i take back my hate but I think I've taught you this before. <laughs> you said, okay. And then. Because just... I, I learn for certain things all the time. Yeah. And then a new thing comes up. And then yeah. I just think about it. And I'm like, the sloth. Why? Yeah. Why? Like, where are they even? You know, what's funny. Where does the sloth You know, live? what's funny. There's a, um, so. And also, you know, you know, it's, and, you know, like antiheroes in, in, in comic books. Mm hmm. I think that might be why it, it rubs me the wrong way. It's like, but maybe that's, that's what people like about it. People like anti jokes. Yeah. It's an anti animal right like right it by definition isn't that cute people just have like turned it cute in their heads like well yeah it has like like we're like hear me out yeah a koala bear is like the exact opposite of a koala bear is internationally known as being very cute and then turns out you find out they're pretty vicious sons of guns and they'll scratch and i think they smell too and they'll scratch your face off to yeah. get the chance but like sloths are so weird and like yeah. What is it? What? what uh, langy? Yeah, lanky. Lanky. Yeah. Lanky, and they just move so slow, and it's that like obscurity that oh, people yeah. are like, oh, like, I actually love it. For a minute, the <sighs> um, the the um, like everyone loves dogs. I'm not gonna get anyone. I'm not gonna get on anyone about being like. I'm like, how could you not like? Dogs? No, but things things go. The blue footed booby, I think booby <laughs> bird or something was was big for a second. But I'll allow that because I feel like that came with brings attention to boobies. No, it was a bird. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> No, but like, I, think maybe I feel we... like that we were actually had a documentary podcast yesterday, and I feel like in one of the documentaries, like a pop, it might have been Planet Earth, which I did mention yesterday, where you saw this very silly bird flapping, it's doing a little dance, yeah, because that's how it made it. It might and, be that one. It might be. It might be the blue footed booby. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This. Oh, it was him. Yeah, <laughs> and and, I, and I'm saying like I'm good. I'm not against that. Like, hey, what are we like? That's sort of the same page. I, 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 I'll never get on anyone. We're all watching Tiger King together. We're all a fan of the blue fit, footed booby together. I'm just not for these waves of anti loves. You, we did have a documentary podcast yesterday. Yeah, we did. And I didn't say, but it's one of my favorite things is the um, docu. What is it? Docu now or something? It's it's it is a parody. Uh, I know Fred Armisen's involved. Uh, the other guy from Saturday Night Live. It's so funny. I love it. And I do believe there's an episode. In that, which it's a, it's like a, what is he? he? He's a marketing guy or a salesman. I think it's Fred Armisen. And it's like, he, he has to promote, now I can't remember, Brussels sprouts maybe or something. And he's really mad because um, what, I think cauliflower was big. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, what, and, and he's like, because you know how um they were making like cauliflower pizza and yeah, cauliflower wings, rice cauliflower. Yeah. yeah. And, um. And his vegetable was like he wasn't getting any traction to yeah. for to be like so popular, um, but I digress. We digress. The um, sloth or sloth, 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 Ross, yeah. Ross. Yeah, it's tomato, tomato. But I mean, tomatoes, tomato. <laughs> yeah, not a fan of the tomato either. <sighs> I won't let you get away with that. Not being put for tomatoes. Yeah. What about your L lycopene? I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, not liking foods is weird, right? No. I always think about that. Can you change that? What foods you like? I like food. You critics. should be eating. Food should... critics eat everything. Not... It is not liking foods. I'm not talking about cilantro, where like you have taste buds. Right. That... It is not liking foods nurture over nature. Wait, yeah. Like, if I was a caveman, I'd imagine, oh, ah, um, nutrients. I just saw an ad, and it was like, 
it literally was a DNA test and it would tell you if you were predisposed to liking to something? liking unusual foods. Unusual foods. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's relative, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I don't know, but it's when I be a mind thing. When too. I do watch the um, no, because some things make you really feel like you want to be sick. When I watched Great British Bake Off or baking show, I don't know what it's called, with Paul Hollywood, uh, I think about them because they're judges. Yeah. Well. And she'll even he'll he'll say she'll say he'll be she'll be like I don't really like rose rose oil or he'll say like I don't really like gherkin pickles, but you know, you're judges and you cannot let your own. Yeah. Thoughts or, you know, your own little opinions get in the way. It has to be, is this a good bake? Is this a good cookie? Or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. I know. And I, that's why I always wonder like, about these, like, because, you know, is, everyone I feel like at some point imagines being a food critic and going to Michelin star restaurants and eating the best food. But do you have to, either one, are they just special humans that, like, just have a taste for everything? Or two, the same way I want to be one is the appeal not the same as the action where like you're not even enjoying the tomatoes you are just so computerized to be like that is a perfectly cooked tomato not that i like not that i like it not me but maybe other people i'm very aware of like what i actually like i'm not i'm not swayed oh I'm not swayed. And, you know, I keep talking about this this child child um, development video that I was watching. Yeah, you're but obsessed I, with it. <laughs> I was watching it. I am not obsessed with it. Um, whenever I learn something, I like to share. And you don't learn many things. So. I like to share and, and I always want to share. And I just think not sharing is so hard to deal with. Oh. And I always bring up Remind the Remind me never to tell you a secret. <laughs> kind of true but no no i would never tell someone secret but um <laughs> i always bring up the tom hanks movie castaway maybe yeah how he had nothing are you laughing this is like the third time you've said someone correctly before they like i don't know castaway uh tiger king tiger king just sounds wrong to me are you sure that's what it's called apparently castaway does too yes Tiger King. Okay. It's been a while. That was so big. Remember? Oh, man. I feel like it's like late night at the bar. Like, remember Tiger King? <laughs> <laughs> the person actually is not even listening. <laughs> oh, no. There's no one there. It's a bartender. It's just like, okay. It's 3.30. What was I just <laughs> Cast away. Cast away. I brought it up before. He is so alone on the island he creates the volleyball to be his friend winston winston can't help him in any way except to be a witness to what he wants to share yeah so i was watching the child development video and it was actually talking about um you said nature nurture and it's like babies what they eat and allergies and it and it was saying years ago we were told not to give the baby anything for certain amounts of time like nothing in the first yeah whatever six weeks or three months or six months or you will create allergies you have to keep it strictly breast milk or strictly Uh. you know wet cereal but from i think from what i learned in the video it was like no actually it's important to give them their curry at that time little tiny kids so that they can start getting ready to yeah which makes sense right because we i feel like sometimes we over we go too far yeah and it's like they got a thing of the past it's like when you're a baby you could be a baby in, in in you know the the Sudan, or you could be a baby in Iceland, and it's like your body is going to learn this is raw fish, or yeah, because only, only yeah. now do we live in a world that you that we have access to everything. But before, yeah. it's like okay, your your one one year old knows that they're going to be eating a diet consisting of, right. and their body is going to know how to break that down. Yeah, break it down, break it down. You just do a little break dancing and. Don't feel bad if 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 you do meet a Mexican or or someone who is um, has a very spicy diet from childhood and they can eat hotter peppers than you and you say oh, a challenge or something. It's like do you ever feel bad about that? A lot of people do. They 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 people get like you wanna you wanna hang. You know, you're like I, I could do it too. Cause you ever see some people they eat they eat raw peppers they, they hot I, peppers raw. I've learned so. I'd have to look into it, but apparently like. Obviously, there, there there's two things going on. One of which is, you know, you can be predisposed to being better with heat. Mm-hmm. But also, there's something about, like, 
you're burning some heat receptors on your tongue that grow back. Mm -hmm. And so the more you eat hot things, the be like the better you are. But if you stop for a long period of time, you're right back to square one. Oh, yeah. And I so, can believe that because a lot of things are like that. And so a lot of people are like, oh, I can eat the hottest foods. And yeah. it's like, well, yeah, because you've been doing that. Yeah. You've been done doing that. You've been done doing that. All right. It's time to go. Hey, guys. It's Thursday. Um, we have a little thing called Walk Through Thursday here where we um open up the Bible. Wait, no. Shoot. <laughs> Roll the intro, please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun because Walk Through Wednesday just begun. What's going on, guys? It is Walk Through Thursday, um, the best time of the week. And today's the day that we open up the Bible. The Bible's open. Once the Bible's open, we skim on through it. A lot of pages, a lot of pages. And um, we pick a single verse or uh, two verses, maybe three. Let's, let's not get it. Usually it's one. one. <laughs> and we sort of look for a deeper meaning. We kind of break it down and go word by word and try to find out what's special about it because on this podcast if you guys are i was gonna say with watch it religiously but i guess any watcher is watching it religiously um long time listener first time caller you know that we're big on the idea that you need all of the bible um not just pieces of it they like every the entire thing makes the dish yeah that doesn't take away from the fact that every ingredient should be looked at and been like well what's in this there is still the ingredient you have the back when you're telling someone the, a dish name and describing the dish, mm -hmm. you're describing. You're saying what, what, it, what it's what it is. This is a a, a beef Wellington. Look at it. Eat it. <laughs> Every, you're, you don't turn on around. Can you imagine at your restaurant. <laughs> you don't turn around and and look at the ingredients list no. and say you are eating rolled pastry, which is made of flour. Right. It's like, and if someone's looking at it and they're looking at like oh cornstarch. Oh, cornstarch. No, it's a beef wellington. <laughs> it doesn't take away from the fact that every individual one of those ingredients made that. If it's missing, you'll taste it. So, so today we're giving we're giving our we're uh giving flowers to the cornstarch. So um <laughs> fellow you are <laughs> Without further ado, uh let's just get into it. So um what are we reading today? Genesis. Oh, book of Genesis. The very first book of the Bible. Um, New International Version. NIV, my favorite version. Um, all right, so we're reading Genesis 41, 49. <clears throat> Let's read it. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain, like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. It just struck me kind of documentary-ish. Because he's documenting, he was trying to document and he couldn't document anymore, but... Um, just to go in line with our theme. But we know that story, right? Yeah, we know that story. So Joseph um, and the coat of many colors. He was um, favored by his father, cast away by his brothers, um, told the dad that they killed him. He became a slave, went to Egypt, turned out to be right-hand man of the Pharaoh. And now he's top of the top. Huge famine comes along. But he had... He's in a good place. He's in a great place. Stored up ton of grain people started coming to him saying we've been we're in famine and we're gonna die one of which was the brothers who they came and then he had the father come yada yada he caused said, the reconciliation they, they they fell on the floors and, and were like ashamed of themselves and he said you guys are still my brothers yeah don't even hey if it wasn't for you i wouldn't be here right so it had a happy ending and this is just one tiny little verse where it's talking about joseph what, storing up what he was grain. doing before they came because, you know, it, it, it helps us, the reader, the, the believer yeah. to um, to know what to know what these brothers, why these brothers pilgrims themselves over there. Yeah, they're starving. And that's he has an abundance. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. So just Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain like the sand of the sea. Um, it was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. Beyond measurable, immeasurable. Yeah, so I, I think a, a a big part of this is just the way they're describing how much, right? Mm -hmm. The sand, the sand of the sea. It's a lot of sand. Yeah, you can never count it. So much. I feel you sick know, thinking uh, about it. You know, when something's too much. Too big. Yeah, to, to fathom. Yeah, you just yeah. throw up. <laughs> 
at school. You're just, you're just at the beach. Everyone's like, <laughs> I'm at the beach. <laughs> what happens? Oh, it's just amazing. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of sand. <laughs> in your mouth? No, in the city. Um, and then he just stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. Sounds like a quitter to me. <laughs> what? He sounds like a quitter. No, I think it's important. Um, this is very early in the Bible. <laughs> Genesis. <laughs> it's as early as you get. And realistically, this is why I think that the importance of the entirety of the Bible, because like it reinforces everything. Mm. It, it, it's like, you know, when you're testing a theory, scientists. Yeah. Or so they call themselves. <laughs> And it's like the more sample size you can get, the more accurate are the results. Yeah. And so Joseph, he had what some would see as as cards not in his favor, right? Like, I got sent to slavery. My brother hated me. But it's his faith in God that he tells you over and over, have faith in me or and ask and you shall receive tenfold. Yeah. Like, you're, like your cup will be overflowing. And... So he was he he was good. He did have faith in God, and look at the difference of him and his brothers. All over what envy. So the brothers were envious because they they thought he had favor in their eyes, and they ended and so they got rid of him, thinking that that would cause that would solve their problems. But all of these earthly problems mean not like any bad thing that happens. They, it can be seen two ways. Like they think that they solve their problem. What they realized is they created the problem because they didn't act with love. Right. And therefore, love wasn't returned. Right. You, you, whatever you give out, you get. And so they gave out hate thinking mm-hmm. that this is going to solve my problem. I'm going to get rid of my enemy in return. Something that nothing to do with the brother. A drought. Or a drought. A um, famine. Famine came and they had no grain. Joseph gave out love <laughs> <laughs> Joseph gave out love and even though like you a lot of times you think that you think well I gave out love and all my friends still hate my my, my friend backstabbed me my wife cheated on me and all I gave her was love mm-hmm. I'm not going to do it anymore I'm done right yeah. how, how many people say that I've, a lot how, how many people say they feel justified they yeah. feel justified they're like well, well you hurt me and so I give up. I'm not giving love anymore. If he did that, if Joseph said, my own brothers right. tried to kill me, it's a wrap. It's done. I'm, I'm, I'm not ever going to. He used to like follow them along the fields. Like, hey, guys, can I, can I tell you about my dreams? Right. Oh, hey. and what did he get for it? He got uh, tempted murder and sold to slavery. <laughs> <laughs> You, you make a good point. Because, it's very easy. Because a lot of people refer to Old Testament as eye for an eye. Yeah. And they're, oh, that's Old Testament. That's old. T- this is Old Testament and it's not that. It's very easy to, you know, hate begets hate, right? Mm-hmm. Until you break the cycle. So he went to the Pharaoh then and still gave out love to these people. Right. Started saying, you know, a lot of people say, you know, fool me once. I, I was genuine and I interpreted my brother's dreams. They didn't like it. They thought... You went to the fair. I was like, "Oh, you know something about dreams?" It's like, "I'm believe me. I learned my lesson. I'm gonna have hard skin, right? Closed eyes. New I'm, year, I'm, new I'm, me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my time as a slave. <laughs> yeah. F all y'all, respectfully, disrespectfully. <laughs> but no, because then that would have yeah. put he would have remained a slave both in his mind and in, in reality. Yeah. But instead, he didn't let that stop him from putting love out, putting his wisdom out. You said you know, you have to share. It's like you felt in that compulsion of like the Pharaoh has a dream. And, and if I think I know what it means, I'm going to tell him. I'm going to give. Right. Even people were coming in. with, And so what happens when you give out? You return. And it all comes full circle. We, you have to take, you have to, well, a lot of people pray for things thinking it says in the Bible, ask and you shall receive. Mm-hmm. It says in the Bible, love and you shall be loved. But then they stop with, he was a boy, and, and a lot of us are, are boys in our spiritual life. And it's like, I did everything the Bible said. Yeah. Right? I did everything the Bible said, and my brother still tried to kill me. That goes against what the Bible is. I don't believe in God anymore. And if we didn't have this full story, and we only got the first part of the, of the brothers, 
we would never know that he, right. he got it. A lot, a lot of people look for when when they say they pray for love with a person in mind, and and that person, like I said, cheats on them. Yeah, they think all I wanted was love, and I was just I asked, and I was good, and I gave out love, mm-hmm. and that person just cheated on me. Right. Who knows? Maybe, or that all was happening because the love that you are praying for is coming from another person that you right. can't even be with this person right. for. Yeah. And then, you know, when the brothers come back, maybe that person comes back and then you see, what did he see? He saw it from the new perspective. Then he said, I'm not mad at you guys. If that, if that, that ex-girlfriend comes back and is like, Oh, like I cheated on you. It's like, why would I be mad at you? I'm with, right. I'm with, I'm with so-and-so. Right. And like, come over for game night. We, we have two kids now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know who else had a, um, a dream and also knew to drive out. Hate help drive Martin out darkness, King. darkness with light. Whose birthday we weren't podcasting on that day, but was this yeah, week? This is Martin Luther. This is basically the week of Martin Luther King, and yeah. and exactly. I mean, you oft wonder why, I, not even oft wonder. There's a lot of people in history that we see as these greats, and we don't really see why, like what made them so, like what makes them so great. Yeah. It's like. Oh, but he he led the movement, and it's like he, he did all this, and it's like, but you have to look at how, like, right. you have to look at that. Like, he never stopped giving out love when nothing but hate was returned to him, and then tenfold is what's given. And uh, unfortunately, I mean, you have to look really spiritual if you're gonna look at this, like, including his own life was taken, right? But the effects of what he did was given back tenfold. So like, that's a, that's a, like talking about not knowing. The plan but just knowing right like having the belief like, yeah i know if i put out goodness and that's all he did he put out love and goodness and that came back tenfold from mm-hmm. from where he started to where the world is now the world's yeah. not perfect right but, and you know people were it was still it was still a famine yeah in these days but the abundance that was created yeah. from giving out love rather than hate hate like yeah. you're giving out Okay, the world f's me. I'm gonna f the world. No, the world f's me. F the yeah, world. Yeah, even in the in the in the in the Bible story, the brothers, their target was the dad, right? If we yeah. can get the if we can get Joseph away from our dad, he won't be favored anymore. Yeah. But they didn't realize he was favored by God. Yeah. And with Martin Luther King, you know, to kill him. Oh, good, we've killed it. Yeah. We haven't killed it. You yeah. know what I mean? Because what he put out there is is still living with with. Exactly. So you're when you target something on Earth, what do you, what are you targeting? Yeah, exactly. Exa- and like how small minded, and that's what really hate is. Hate hate's always very small minded. It's like this is realistically like if I do this, I'll be happy. If I do this, my life will be easier. Giving out love is a lot more open minded, which makes it easier to hate than to love, right? Because yeah, when you love, you have to. When you're giving out love, you have to accept that. You don't know when it's going to come back. like, And it can be a lot of dark times before it does circle back. Right. It, it circles back tenfold. Right. Where hate, what's it called, is a very short-lived, you know, boom, right. boom. You see the results of hate quick. Right. They saw the results of, of him being out of their lives quick. Right. And only when 20 years passed, they realized the detriment that happened to them because that hate was to put them, out into the world. Right. Yeah. They always say that, if you know, the hate, when you decide to hate someone or get revenge or, you know, you are digging two graves because it's it's a poison that you're sharing with yourself. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, just abundance of grain. And like I said, a lot of times we would finish up. It's like we see these stories and it makes a lot of sense. It's a lot harder to live like that because there is no promise. He wasn't promised. 10 times worth of grain right right no one no one told him hey just keep keep your faith right you're gonna get it <clears throat> right it was pure faith right that just all i'm gonna do is put out love mm-hmm. and no guarantee no promise and you get it and a lot of people are in their place where they might be in the pit from their brothers That's right and they might be sent off this uh theoretical slavery or symbolic for slavery yeah and they are ready to say the F this. Yeah. Uh, I I don't care anymore. Right. There's why am I going to to why am I going to be a doormat? Right. No. I who could play this game? It's a lot harder to do that, but the rewards are a lot greater. And that's what I have to say about that. 
So come back tomorrow. We'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> we have 25 to life, so yeah, we'll, be, right, we'll, be right, here. Right. we'll be here every single day. <laughs> um, come back tomorrow for, walk, or for Dr. Seuss Friday. Peace. Go get your green. <laughs>